Hello, everybody. My name is Rob Fern. I'm here with Keith Reeves. We are the Seditionists, and we are here today to talk about a, a topic that uh, is sort of hot in the news right now. You're seeing it all over social media. It's uh, elementary punishments, um, doing away with detention and going into more of a, a period of meditation um, as a means of consequence, which which is interesting. Uh, and, and the stuff that I've read has been fascinating, and there's a lot of benefit that they're seeing to uh, teaching kids how to meditate, how to sort of bring themselves down to, a, to an area where they can be, feel like they're in more control of their bodies physically, emotionally, and it's working. The tensions are down, suspensions are almost obsolete in these classrooms. Um, I'm an elementary principal, and probably my biggest frustration is uh, we don't have any consequences and punishments I just firmly don't believe in. A punishment is where you do something to the child and they're supposed to feel a negative reaction and there's no necessary learning involved, like going to a jail. You know, you're out of the situation, but it doesn't teach you right from wrong. A consequence is supposed to teach you right from wrong so that you would not have to do it again. Um, a detention, for example, is not a consequence. It doesn't teach you anything. It keeps you out of the, out of the situation. That's a punishment. Um, unfortunately, at the elementary level especially, we don't have good consequences. Um, and maybe that's due in part to the, uh, the politics and policies of the communities these days. Because I remember when I used to get in trouble, my dad would call and say, make him wash the wall if you put a dot on it, you know. If you, if, you, if you did something to the desk, make him wash the desk, you know. We don't have those abilities anymore, uh, the modern times. So, Keith, what are your thoughts on discipline at the elementary level and this idea of meditation as something to teach them? I'm a huge fan of the project. Um, the specific item at hand is West Baltimore. Um, we're seeing this spread through uh, schools like Wildfire, and I think that it's research-based and appropriate, as punishment is not something we should ever do to children. I'm going to say it again so people don't think that I just made that up off the top of my head and I misspoke. You never punish children, ever, ever, at all, period. As Rob rightly said, right, a punishment is designed to cause negative psycho-emotional response in a child. It is designed to create some form of pain, suffering, or shame. Unacceptable behavior around children, right? Massive amounts of research show that you are causing significant and lasting psychosocial and psycho-emotional harm to children when you punish them. Let's not even get into corporal punishment, which makes me nauseous, right? And there's a massive amount of research that says any kind of physical pain caused to a child intentionally by a caretaker figure causes the brain to react as if it has been traumatized, okay? And I'm not interested in having a debate about that with anybody. The science is clear. You're entitled to disagree with me if you want. Want, just understand you're disagreeing with every meaningful fact on the subject, right? And I hate it when people are like, well, I, hit, I got hit and I turned out fine. No, you didn't, all right? You, just like we talked about two videos ago, had a nail driven into your base and you had to grow around it. That was an unnecessary trauma. Sorry to get a little fired up. <laughs> so we don't punish children. We don't put them into negative situations that cause them harm. What Rob just said is absolutely critical. We have to create an antecedent, consequent relationship in their mind, in a relevant and meaningful meaningful way, in a developmentally appropriate way, for the child to understand this is what happened, this was the outcome, and why is this an undesirable outcome, right? What would a better outcome have been? Take, for example, putting the dot on the wall. You make a mark on your school wall, you know? If you just say, wash that off, that doesn't really necessarily do anything. But if you take the time to explain, look at the kind of effort that has to go into this, why do we not want to mark our walls, why is keeping our school clean a good thing to do, that's teaching, right? And Rob and I do that as educators. It's unfair, I suppose, to ask parents to come out of the block saying, I know how to teach. Of course you don't. You haven't studied education and child development like we have. But we as teachers have responsibilities, just like we talked about in the last video, to model those behaviors. Excellent. Yeah, um, I'm actually going to, uh, I've set up a little committee, for lack of a better term, a couple of my teachers, a couple of parents that are in the community, and we are going to be uh, looking more into this idea of meditation, awesome. uh, and, and we're trying to find some times to put it in. Um, 
and apparently one of one of the colleagues that I ran into from our intermediate unit, which is like our county seat, um, said that yoga is another thing that we could look at as another form of that same style. And they actually have a yoga person who's willing to come out and meet with the teachers to discuss this with him. So that's already on the books for us. Awesome. Uh, that's coming in, and we're going to talk more about it. So uh, I'll be real curious to see how this works. Um, it only... I mean, when it comes down to it, <laughs> it makes good sense. Um, it does. Your mental health is critical to everything you do. So if you can, if you can get your brain into such a state that you can calm yourself, give yourself an opportunity to, to think uh, in a passive sense, then I, I think you can make better decisions about anything you do. Um, and I think, at least from my limited knowledge of what I've read, that's what the meditation will give them opportunities to be able to do, to yeah. pause, slow down. Uh, and reflect. Reflect, yeah. And it's a process. So, you know, maybe those of us that are in our 40s, you know, we would maybe we did that more naturally back then, and maybe the kids of today have lost that ability. I don't know. But, you know, I would have liked to have had the ability to learn to meditate. It's just a way of teaching yourself to calm and I don't yeah. think there's anything wrong with ever being able to show yourself how to bring yourself down to that calm state I think that kids uh, got used to punishment because we were such a punishment oriented society yeah. and it's it's a fairly modern convention really a 20th century convention to have the amount of psychosocial um, and neuropsychological research that shows us the damage that had been caused right. this kind of goes back a few videos ago when we were talking about the bootstrapping thing I get very frustrated by you know the idea of toughening children up we don't want to toughen children up Ch and I just wrote a blog post about this at katiereves.com called I think it was like in celebration of the wild child um, I'm interested in feral children, like free-range kids, you know. Punishing children to get them to conform and become little miniature adults is not developmentally appropriate. That is not, it's just like things like the paleo diet don't necessarily make sense, you know. We just take an idea of something and then we apply it, but it's like, you know, we've been through a lot of evolution since then, right? <laughs> or people that say, you know, oh, we're evolved to eat meat. I was like, we're evolved to eat, like, wild game, <laughs> which has, like, 3% of its calories from fat, not pork, and was, which has like 30% of yeah, its calories. Like that, right? but I'm pretty sure all those paleo people that were on the diet, I think their longest life expectancy was like 35, right? So <laughs> the Tyrannosaurus didn't get them. I mean, maybe they right. did. <laughs> you know, you, we've got to be honest about the science, and the truth of the matter is that we didn't know the kind of damage that we were causing to children for a long time, and now that we know, what are we going to do about it? It's like people who continue to smoke despite knowing that it's lung cancer, continuing to say climate change was invented by the Chinese or something like that. I think that was the tweet. I'm quoting, not just making that up. There's no evidence to support that. The science shows us, right? And so the science of meditation, the science we've done around yoga, the science we've done around Feldenkrais and Alexander Technique, we can see significant positive pro-social developmental appropriate neuropsychological phenomenon in the child brain. If we're going to take seriously the research at hand and going to take seriously child development research showing what stages children can understand the moral consequences, Lawrence Kohlberg's moral developmental theories, if we're going to take all that science together, forcing a kid to sit in a room and sit still for 25 minutes is just jack. That does nothing. Right. It's not an appropriate way to teach children. People often think that I'm saying, well, what, you just let kids do whatever they want? I was like, well, kind of, but not really. If a kid does something destructive, or a kid does something harmful, or a kid does something that really is a problem, then we have to teach why that's not okay. You can't just be like, stop it, whack, and yeah. think they're going to learn anything. It's <laughs> ridiculous. Absolutely. Could not agree more. Well, thank you. If anybody uh, has any more thoughts on this, um, you can go to katiereves.com, robferman.com. Uh, we both have Twitter handles, and uh, we're very easy to find on the Internet, certainly. Uh, or if anything, comment down below here in our, in our video section, and uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts on this as well. Um, it's a touchy subject, I know. I know a lot of people get very uh, passionate about this, and uh, we are too. So we're always uh, interested in having our thoughts um, debated and discussed, uh, it helps us grow as well. Uh, so please, uh, subscribe to our videos below. Uh, I'm Rob Furman, my best friend here, Keith Reeves, and we will see you soon. Thank you.